Okay, so in this video, I am going to talk to you about simple carbohydrates. So let's just have a look at carbohydrates for a second. The word carbohydrate tells us a lot. It tells us that it is a carbon that has been hydrated. And if we look at that, it shows us the general formula for all carbohydrates. C-N-H-2-N-O-N. So let's have a think about glucose. We know that the formula for glucose is c 6 h 12 O6. Because glucose has six carbons in it, we say that it is a hexose sugar, and we can apply that to any number of carbohydrates. So if it had three carbons in it, it would be a trio sugar. If it had four carbons in it, it would be a tetro sugar which is very rare and not something you'll learn about at A-level. If it had five carbons in it, it would be a pento sugar, which is something that you'll learn about. Um, for instance, we have pento sugars, ribose and deoxyribose in um, RNA and DNA respectively. And then the hexo sugars, which are the most common ones you learn about. So glucose uh, and fructose, for instance. Uh, and these are used for energy and building blocks for other molecules. So what I want to, to look at today is the structure of both alpha and beta glucose. Alpha and beta glucose are optical isomers of each other. Have you come across that term before, optical isomer? Optical isomers are molecules where they're basically mirror images of each other. So they have exactly the same chemical formula, exactly the same molecular weight, but they form mirror images of each other. And we'll see that when we look at the diagrams of the two. So let's draw alpha glucose. Okay, so let's take a look at this molecule. So we can see on here that I've labeled the carbon. So just follow it around, carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. Alpha glucose is different from beta glucose because it has a hydrogen at the top in position one on carbon one. We will notice when we look at beta glucose that it's the other way around, the OH is on the top. And that is essentially the only difference. It might seem small, but it is important. And you have to be able to recognize it so that you can draw it. And also it'll be important later on when you have to learn about the formation of glycosidic bonds. So that is the one key difference between the two. So in this diagram, um, we can see that we've got the six carbons and the sixth carbon pokes out at the top. One common mistake that students make is to think that the whole hexose ring is made of six carbons and to accidentally put the carbon where this oxygen atom is here. So when you're labeling the carbons, when you're numbering them, you go from the oxygen and you go carbon one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth one points out at the top. And it's really important to note that the sixth carbon is a CH2OH attached up here and it sticks out at the top on this alpha glucose molecule. But you can learn a much simpler version. You don't have to be able to draw this complex version with all of the molecules. You can essentially draw one that doesn't have the carbons in it. It just has them as the angles in the shape and it just has the key hydrogen and OH molecules in it. And we'll have a look at that one next. Just one final thing though, and this might seem really, really picky, but when you're drawing the OH, the O has to go next to the bond line. It can't be the H. This is because the O is the one that's able to form two bonds, but H is only able to form one bond. So if you drew the H next to the bond line, it wouldn't then be able to bond onto the oxygen. So there are obviously bond lines missing in this diagram, and therefore it's really important that when you draw the bond lines from the carbon, they go to the O and not to the H. So let's compare alpha glucose to beta glucose. So here's the alpha glucose that we drew just a second ago. And let's draw our beta glucose alongside it. So we can see then that the only distinct difference between these two is the position of the H and the OH on carbon one. And that's the only key difference that you need to remember.
let's just draw the simplified version of beta glucose next to the simple version of alpha glucose so that we can see the difference on those. So far, we have talked about monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the simplest form of carbohydrate, and it is when there is one sugar present. Mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar. So monosaccharides can join together to form disaccharides. Di meaning two. So when we form a bond between two monosaccharides, we produce a disaccharide. And that's the next thing we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how we go from a monosaccharide to a disaccharide. The type of reaction that forms a disaccharide is called a condensation reaction. The reason it's called a condensation reaction is because water is formed. So water is formed and comes away from the molecule. So let's walk through a condensation reaction forming a disaccharide between two alpha glucose molecules. So we can see here our glycosidic bond is formed between the first carbon and the fourth carbon in this particular example, and this forms a 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now, when you learn a little bit later on about molecules like starch, you'll learn that there are also 1,6 glycosidic bonds. These are exactly the same in their formation. It's just that instead of forming the bond between the first and the fourth carbon, you form the bond between the first and the sixth carbon. So you get a rotation of the second molecule, and this enables you to have branches and side chains, which is really important in starch because it likes to be nice and compact so that it can be a really useful storage molecule. So this disaccharide is built up from two monosaccharides in a condensation reaction. It can be broken down via a hydrolysis reaction. A hydrolysis reaction is a reaction that uses water to break a bond. And we'll look at that next. So we can see here this water molecule has been added in order to separate out the two monosaccharides and return them to their original condition. This sort of thing happens during digestion. And you'll learn about this in a lot more detail later on when you do that topic on digestion. Let's just take a minute now to have a look at a few examples of disaccharides. So glucose plus fructose gives us sucrose. Glucose plus galactose gives us lactose. And glucose plus glucose gives us maltose. In turn, obviously, if we broke down sucrose, we would get glucose and fructose. If we broke down lactose, we'd get glucose and galactose. And if we broke down maltose, we'd get glucose and another glucose molecule. And these, just for your reference, are referring to alpha glucose molecules. All of these are alpha glucose molecules. And you right, might remember from GCSE that the enzyme that would be used for breaking these down would be sucrase, lactase, and maltase. Okay, so the very final thing we're going to talk about today is what are the main uses of monosaccharides to all living things, which really is the most important thing we can think about. We can know what their structure is, but what we need to know is what they're used for. Well, um, monosaccharides are used for two key things. They're used for energy and they're used for building blocks. So they're really, really useful for energy because they have a really large number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now, this might not mean that much to you right now, but when you learn about respiration a little bit later on in the second year, you'll learn about really what respiration is, is taking that energy out of the carbon-hydrogen bonds and putting them into another molecule to produce ATP from ADP. So don't worry about that too much for now, but you just need to understand that they're really useful to convert ADP into ATP 
in order to release energy for use in metabolic reactions. And they're also used as building blocks. So it can be polymerized to make polysaccharides like starch, glycogen, and cellulose. And we know that starch is the energy storage molecule in plants, glycogen is the energy storage molecule in animals, and cellulose is the main component of plant cell walls. Uh, we also know that they can be built up into other kinds of molecules. For instance, uh, pentoses can be used in DNA, RNA, and ATP. Okay, so in this video, we've looked at a few key things that you need to learn. We have looked at the structure of both alpha and beta glucose. We have looked at how you form a disaccharide from two monosaccharides. We have learned the terms condensation reaction and hydrolysis reaction, as well as the term glycosidic bond, which is the name of the bond formed between two sugars. We've also looked at examples of disaccharides and we have looked at the main uses of disaccharides in living organism. I hope you found it useful and you need to learn all of these things. Well done.